This is a sister video that goes with a different video uh, showing how I made a couple of console tables out of sycamore. This video really focuses on the steel table frames that were made for the underneath. Um, it's kind of a double setup of legs. You end up with eight legs per table. And there's actually kind of a top frame and a bottom frame. And um, this shows that, that process for making this. I used a one inch square stock on this. Uh, lower right corner of this photo shows kind of the, the quote unquote artist's rendition of this. Um, and it was robbed from a very popular retailer that makes furniture. And the person really liked that, that style. So uh, I'm just measuring things out. When, I'm, when I make these, I actually have a couple of different tools that I use to cut steel with. One is the saw you see here, which is just an abrasive wheel. I set this one up at 45 degrees and leave it that way. Um, it's not a good saw. <laughs> and so if you try to change it, it doesn't want to come back to where it was. So I just set it and forget it. And every 45 degree angle that I cut is done on that saw. Um, I'm just cleaning up the steel a little bit where you have kind of shavings on the end after you cut with an abrasive wheel like that. You'll see in a minute I've got a band saw too and I leave that one at 90 degrees. That way whenever I'm cutting square cuts I know which saw to go to and if I need to cut miters I use the other one that, I, that you saw on the floor there. Uh, the steel that I use here was excessively oily for some reason. It comes that way so that it won't rust, but it had a it had a bunch on it. And what I'm doing here is cutting a bunch of miter joints so that the top frame and bottom frame come together kind of like a picture frame um, just underneath the table and the, the frame that sits on the floor. I just think you get a better result when you've got mitered corners like that. Right here I'm setting up for uh, some uprights and a bunch of straight cuts um, like I said, there's eight legs per table, so I've got to cut 16 uprights, and that's what that's what this process is. This is that bandsaw I talked about. I leave this one at 90 degrees all the time. Little oil cuts right through it. It's not a problem. Next step in the process, once you get your pieces cut, is to make sure that where you're going to weld is really clean. That means no dirt, no mill scale from the steel mill, no oil, nothing left. So a great way to do that is taking a flap disc and just uh, grinding the ends of your steel so that they're ready to go. When you get the, the frame set up, you can just tack weld from there. A lot of people who don't weld don't necessarily know, and there are a lot of contaminants that can screw up your weld, including oxygen. So that's what welding, uh, when you're using a MIG welder or a TIG welder, that's what that IG stands for in MIG or TIG. It's inert gas, and it is a big shielding gas over your weld so that it doesn't look sloppy when you're done. Here's a couple of stacks of everything cut and ready to go. Now I just need to mock it up. Several months ago, I made this welding table, and it really helps with better results because um, any, any welder or, in fact, woodworker, anybody that does that kind of work knows that the best thing that you can do to help yourself is to have a flat reference. And that's what this table is all about, is once you can get something that you can clamp to and you know that your pieces will stay to it, then you can weld and not be stressed out about it moving afterward. Something that happens a lot in welding, again, this is for you know people who may not know, don't do any welding, but when you heat up that steel, it wants to, it wants to pull on you or it'll push something and it comes out of whack. That's why all the clamps on. When you see somebody welding up like this, they really clamp the heck out of it a lot of times so that it stays put. And if you don't do it, then that 45 degree angle uh, that you were trying to get a 90 out of by putting two of them together, it's who knows what it's going to do. It lifts on one end, it spreads apart, it pulls together. Most of the time it pulls together. But if you can keep it together and clamp it hard to something flat like this table, you get a lot better result. So all you're seeing here is a bunch of tack welds, and then I'm trying to do some inside corner welds here. And I'm just going around and around each of these frames until they're finally fully welded. This is all, I think, on the, the smaller table frame, it looks like to me. Here's a close-up of just a couple of tack welds. And then I'm on to what appears to be the longer table. When you have a table that's nice and steady like this, it doesn't matter if your piece hangs off as long as, like I said, as long as you can clamp it to something good and solid, 
your results should be okay. And these came out pretty good. This is my first time using this table. I made it, I don't know, three or four months ago. And it works out pretty good. So this just sped up. Once you get all those welds on there, if you have a really old welder like mine and it, it doesn't weld consistently, you find yourself going back and cleaning up. And a lot of times you have to over weld on your joints and you end up with all this extra metal there. And if you want a nice smooth look, you put in the time. And this is the time that is really invested when it comes to doing metal fabrication in my shop anyway, is grinding, grinding, and more grinding. You're only seeing a fraction of it here in this video, but um, you know you spend your time blending the steel together, getting your corners right, sweeping up the floor of all the metal dust so that you're not slipping and falling. And by the way, any magnets are picking everything up all over the place. It, it can be a little bit of a mess, but you put in that time so that your results look better. And I, in a, just a couple of minutes, I think I have a, a comparison of what a weld looks like when it got done right here. And you can see that it's kind of built up. There's some heat marks, which are no big deal, but you can see that it's built up and it's kind of ugly looking. But when you blend it in and you, you spend time on it, this is what it can look like. And that's what I'm after. And you don't want to take it to the powder coating place with it, you know, looking like a mess because it's just going to be coated. It's just going to be a coated mess at that point. So that's what all the time is spent doing. Almost done with this frame, mocking it up, you know, getting everything square, clamping it down. This looks like the small table. Everything looks good by eye. So you want to take it down, make sure that it's going to sit stable on the floor. Not that a concrete floor is all that true, but it's a good measure to see. Does it rock? Did I get anything wrong? Looks like it was pretty solid at that time. So I move on to the next one. So now you're going around fully welding your joints. A lot of your time is spent tacking first just to get it to hold together. And then you test it, make sure everything stayed square and straight. And then you can go around and do full welds. And then it's all this work all over again. Grind, 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 polish, polish, polish. That's what this is. This is a little bit smaller polisher here. I'm going in and blending those welds just a little bit more. So that was all, that must have been all the, the small table. This is the larger table here. I think I mentioned before in the other video, that's this is for the six foot table. And once you get that first part down, you put the other the other frame down and set it on top, tack weld it, and you're good. Now this right here is just making a bunch of tabs. They're welding tabs that I then welded to the frame. And the idea was to use these as bolt holes. This is where the, the bolts would go through the frame and into the table, the bottom of the tabletop to hold it all together. But um, I'm going to leave this in the video, but I ended up not using these tabs. I welded them on and I didn't like it and I cut them right back off and then took the whole thing to the powder coating uh, guy that I use and uh, brought it back. And I ended up just attaching it directly through the frame. I drilled holes in the frame and, and that's where the bolts go. It made for a cleaner look in the end. And there I am. And through the magic of video, I drop them in the truck. And two seconds later, i.e. two and a half weeks later, they come back from the powder coating place. All done, durable flat black finish ready to go on to the to the tables. I was real pleased with how these came out. If you want to see the tables in whole, you can always check out my other video that shows the uh, the wood part, the you know the tabletop build and then you can see me putting these back onto those tables. Thanks for watching.